It's very important that you can distinguish between ionic compounds and covalent compounds, but it's also very easy to do. Ionic compounds contain a metal and a nonmetal. Remember that metals are on the left side of the dark jagged line, and nonmetals are on the right side of the dark jagged line. So ionic compounds have at least one element from both sides of the dark jagged line, a metal and a nonmetal. And covalent compounds contain all nonmetals. So all of the elements in a covalent compound will be found on the right side of that dark jagged line. So let's look at a few examples to make sure you understand. Our first example is calcium oxide, so calcium and oxygen. Calcium is a metal and oxygen is a nonmetal. So calcium oxide is an ionic compound because it contains a metal and a nonmetal. It's that easy. NCl3 is next, nitrogen trichloride. So I have nitrogen and chlorine. And because nitrogen and chlorine are both nonmetals, NCl3 is a covalent compound. Next, we have Ki, or potassium iodide. So potassium is a metal, and iodine is a nonmetal. So this is an ionic compound because it contains a metal and a nonmetal. AgCl is silver chloride. Silver is a metal, and chlorine is a nonmetal. So because this contains a metal and a nonmetal, it is an ionic compound. And finally, we have N2O4, or dinitrogen tetroxide. So nitrogen is a nonmetal, and oxygen is a nonmetal. So because this compound contains all nonmetals, it's a covalent compound. So it really is that simple. You just find the elements in the compound, if you have a metal and a nonmetal, then it's ionic, and if they're all nonmetals, it's covalent. So I hope this video has helped you understand how to distinguish between ionic and covalent compounds. Keep up the great work, I'll see you next time.